By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are back at the Color Clash. We have reached the finals of this grand event. We started with 55 players, now only to remain. We've got Alex and he's playing Mono White and he has to take on David and David is playing Blue, Mono Blue. So I think these are the two colors that really did the best throughout the whole tournament, especially blue. So I'm not surprised to find that color in the finals. I am surprised, however, about the type of blue deck that David is playing with because I've called it combo blue. It's very exceptional. So when you look at the specific rule set of this tournament, remember you're only allowed to play with eight artifacts and they're all uh, restricted. So then to build a combo like deck, uh, it's quite uh, interesting, you know, it's quite an accomplishment, you know. Um, anyway, before I dive into the deck tech section, I've got lovely deck photos of both of these decks. I would first like to point out that, as always, you can also choose to skip this, maybe check it out after the games. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there. It'll take you straight to the games. And in that same description below, you can also find more information about this specific tournament. So if you want to know all the rules, all the ins and outs of the Color Clash, check out the description below. There's also a nice link to the tournament website where you can check out all the decks, have another look at the results again, and of course, read more about the rules. Okay, so now that you're fully infor informed, I'm going to continue with the deck decks. I'm going to start with uh, the deck of, um, of Alex. Let's take a look at his Mono White Brew. And here we see the mono white deck of Alex, right? And this is your white weenie build. It's got Savannah Lions, it's got Thunder Wolves, it's got White Knights, it's got the Pegasi, it's got the Thunder Spirits, so all play sets, right? I guess Thunder, Thunder Wolves, only three of though, no play sets. It also has Crusades. Interestingly here is that he's playing with two Crusades instead of four Crusades. So uh, he's made some space for other cards. And I really kind of like the other cards that he's put in this deck as well. I'm a big fan of one-offs. And I think it gives your, your deck some diversity, some other opportunities. I think that the one-off I like the most here is the Preacher. You know, Preacher, of course, is four to cast, a card from the dark. You can tap it and then your opponent has to give you one of his or her creatures. Uh, and your opponent can choose, you know, so that's a bit of a downside. But, I mean, you do take over a creature, and that can be quite good, especially in combination with Swords to Plowshares, right? You kind of sort the creatures away you don't want, and then you've got the preacher to steal the creature that you do want. And what I like about this is that he's playing with a lot of one drops and two drops and three drops. So he's probably going to put a lot of pressure on his opponent early on. So the opponent's kind of forced to use his or her removal early in the game. And then all of a sudden later in the game, in the mid game or, or you know late game when the game's kind of stuck, boom, there's a preacher on the table and that's going to steal one of the bigger, bigger creatures on the side of the opponent. Kind of like this surprise element in the deck. So I really like that. I also like the inclusion of the one jam day tome because it kind of gives you a chance if you cannot win early stages in the game, which is basically what you want to do with this deck. If that doesn't succeed, at least you've got a chance with the Preacher and the Gem de Tome. And then, of course, the, the creature there on the left side of the Tome, uh, the Sarah Angel. You know, Sarah Angel, of course, a beautiful creature, one of the strongest creatures in old school, perhaps the strongest creature in old school. Five to cast for a 4-4 flyer that doesn't have to tap when it attacks. So that's really at the top end of this deck. So, I mean, yes, it's White Weenie, but it's got some control cards and it's got some mid-range cards in it as well so it's a pretty diverse white weenie build and i'm pretty happy to see it in the finals because you don't see a lot of white weenie anymore at your regular old school magic tournament so it's really cool to see uh, it shine here at this uh, event really really sweet perhaps it'll even win the event who knows alex maybe your build will win it anyway this is the deck of alex now let's take a look at the deck of his opponent and here we see the deck of David. And uh, I'm a little bit surprised to see this deck uh, because this is mono blue combo, right? And one of the things we did here is we restricted the artifacts, making it harder for players to kind of build a deck that's built around artifacts. And of course, blue and artifacts, one of the most successful combo decks there is the Twiddle Vault deck. So we do see one Time Vault in here. Another really successful combo deck with blue is uh, Power Monolith. And we also see Power Monolith in here. Um, but when I'm looking at this deck, I think that David did something very clever because Stasis, of course, which is a very good combo piece in these type of decks, is not restricted. It's a blue card. You can play a four of. So in this case, he's playing with three Stasis. And, you know, basically what I think he wants to do is lock his opponent with Stasis 
that will buy him time to kind of find the components that he needs. And of course, with Power Monolith, he can have an endless supply of mana and then he can use his rocket launcher to win the game. So maybe it's good to first kind of discuss these cards and how this combo works. So Basil Monolith is three to cast and then you can tap it for three mana and then you've got to pay three again to untap it. Now, uh, Power Monolith, or sorry, Power Artifact is an enchantment, an enchant artifact that reads enchant artifacts abilities costs two less to activate. This effect cannot reduce the mana in the cost to less than one mana. So what this does is if you put a power artifact on your bezel monolith, you can now untap your bezel monolith, not for three mana anymore, but for one mana because you get the discount of two, but then you can tap it again for three mana. So every time you do this, you have a profit of two mana, meaning you've got infinite mana. When you've got infinite mana, you can use your rocket launcher and rocket launcher is a card from antiquities that is an artifact that says pay two deal one damage to any target, and then the rocket launcher is destroyed at the beginning of the next turn's end step. So if you've got an endless amount of mana and you can pay two to deal one damage, you can of course pay a million, million mana to deal 500,000 damage to your opponent, for example, and win the game. So that's definitely one way that he can win the game. Another way that he can win the game with infinite mana is by using a Brain Geyser, because Brain Geyser allows you to draw X cards, and then of course you can also force your opponent to draw X cards, meaning that his library will be empty when it's his turn and he'll be deck dead. So there are like two ways that lead to Rome for him to win. There's also another way that he can win here, and that's, I think, through Mirror Universe and Psionic Blast, because what if his opponent, he is really low because he's got a pretty slow deck, right? He's got a combo deck, so he's vulnerable at the beginning stage. Just remember, he is playing against a white weenie deck, so that that's gonna be quite tough. Uh, but so in those beginning stages, he's probably gonna take a lot of damage, but at a certain point, he will have his lock on with his stasis, his opponent cannot do anything, and if then he can find a moment to use his mirror universe, change life totals, and what if he's on four, he changes life totals, now his opponent's on four, and then he can finish the job with a psionic blast, right? So the psionic blast can also be a road uh, to victory, another road to victory, so he's got a couple here, is of course Control Magic. Now, I'm not sure if Control Magic is as good in this matchup because, you know, White of course has access to Disenchant. On the other hand, there's so much to Disenchant for his opponent that maybe he runs out of Disenchants before the Control Magic hits. So just a good Control Magic on, for example, a Sarah Angel can also, you know, get him a long way in potentially winning the game. Um, so yeah, this is just a deck with a lot of tricks, you know, I haven't even discussed the Time Vault yet. We see their Twiddle and Time Vault. That's, of course, a great combination as well. So there are just a lot of things here that he can do. And what definitely stands out is the fact that he's playing with four Recall. So, I mean, for David, his Graveyard is really a big resource as well. So really an interesting deck. And I'm, I'm sure he can pilot it as an absolute champ because he made it all the way to the final. So I'm really uh, impressed by that. This deck, if I would play this it would give me a headache at a certain point, right? I could play a few games with this, but oh, it's gonna be tough to play this a whole tournament, you know? And I think this is also really a deck that uh, does really well online because there's no, uh, you know, time limit. When you play at a tournament, you usually have 50 minutes time limit. On the other hand, I think this deck can win it within that amount of time, you know? I think it's definitely possible, but um, yeah. I mean, I tip my, my hat to you, sir, for playing this deck and uh, not getting a migraine while doing it. That is that is an accomplishment alone. And you're now in the finals. And I'm really curious to see how you pilot this deck. I haven't seen you in action. I haven't seen this deck at all. So this is going to be a first for me as well. And that in the finals. So I'm really, really curious. Uh, so this is the deck of David. Uh, we've looked at the deck of Alex. And that means we're ready. Let's go to the finals of the Color Clash. Game number one, here we go. So it's uh, David on the play. He's playing mono blue, starting with an island, but probably just gonna pass exactly. Alex on mono white, starting with the planes, into a soul ring, into a chaos orb. So pretty explosive start here by Alex. I actually think it would have been better for Alex to just have his Havana Lions turn one in this specific matchup. Remember, David on Mono Blue, really more the combo control player in this matchup, and Alex the aggressor. So the faster you can start dealing damage, the better it is. So let's see if Alex can uh, can play out a creature this turn. There's a second planes, perhaps a Thunder Spirit, a Pegasus, perhaps. Let's see what he can do.
Tapping the two white. Are we gonna see a, yep, there's the white knight. 2-2, two, two, first strike, pro black. And a pass here to David. So that means that he can start jumping in with that knight, start dealing some damage. There's another island by David. Three blue for him now. And just passing the turn. So no action yet from that side of the board. There's the attack for two. So it's gonna deal the first points of damage here in the finals of the color clash. We see David dropping to 18. And let's see if Alex can put some more pressure on the board. Perhaps another land and an early Sarah Angel. That would be pretty devastating for David. Instead, it's gonna be another white knight. Are we gonna see a counter spell from David? No counter magic, just a pass turn. So next turn he can uh, attack for four. Put him on 14. Or can David do something, you know? If he can find land number four, his deck kind of starts to work. He's playing with three stasis in his deck. And also I believe two control magics and a lot of tricks. So there's island number four. Are we gonna see a pass or is he gonna do something? There's tapping a blue, there's a twiddle, interesting. So it looks like he's gonna tap the soul ring to make sure that Alex cannot use it on whatever David's gonna cast next. So one of the things that Alex can do here is tap the soul ring in response, have two colorless floating. However, David can then simply go to combat and then second main and those mana will be uh, drained out of the pool and that would uh, mean two points of damage for Alex because we do play with mana burn in the color clash. So it's probably just best for Alex to keep the soaring tapped unless of course he wants to use the Chaos Orb right now and, uh, and flip it on an island. It looks like he's looking up something on the computer, perhaps some kind of rule. But um, yeah, that's kind of how it works. So you would play that twiddle your first main. So that soaring is now tapped. And let's see what else David can do here. Tapping two. Oh, he wants to play a copy artifact. No stasis. Okay, for a moment there, I thought perhaps a copy artifact on the Chaos Orb. But there's the stasis. So stasis enchantment from blue, and uh, it means you don't have an uh, untap step anymore. But you do have to pay one blue during your upkeep to keep the stasis around. So there's the attack with the knight, and we see David dropping to 16. So. David now just really needs to continue paying for the stasis. Paying the one blue. I really wonder what his plan is here. Probably has a lot of blue in hand. Just wants to buy some time, find the right moment. Oh, look at this. Cannot pay passing the turn. So that means that next turn, David's gonna lose the stasis. That's pretty bad. Exactly, there goes the stasis. Everything's still tapped on the side of David. So next turn, he's looking at more damage, four points of damage, he would drop to 12. There's the pass, no island, no nothing. So was this a move of desperation from David? Let's see, Alex, of course, attacking here for four, putting David on 12. So David really under pressure. Alex having four mana, let's see what he can do with that. Tapping the one, there's a Tundra Wolves, one, one, a creature from Legends with first strike. Tapping three, or we're gonna see a Pegasus. There's the Pegasus, it's gonna take one damage from mana burn. The Pegasus is a one, one flying creature with banding. Exactly, taking the mana burn damage. And perhaps if I was Alex, I would consider maybe using my Chaos Orb to flip on an island because David's low on mana, you know, and his deck really needs a lot of mana. So, might be worth considering. Of course, Chaos Orb is, is super powerful and it can solve so many problems. I also understand that he doesn't do it. Okay, there's another island from David. So, five islands. There's a time walk. Okay. And in the same turn, tapping three blue for a recall. Okay, so what is he gonna get back? Perhaps the time walk again to take another extra turn. Let's see what card he's gonna discard here to the recall. So putting a counter spell in the bin, 
getting back to stasis, okay. And I mean, David really knows how to pilot this deck, of course, you know, I guess he's in the finals for a reason. And there we see the stasis. So the stasis is back and the stasis is really just in there to buy time for David to find the pieces that he needs, right? And he's doing a pretty good job at that. So everything remains tapped now for Alex. There's a planes. Of course, he still has his two untapped creatures. One of the, okay, he's attacking with them. I, I wanted to say one of the things he could do is keep them untapped, waiting for, for example, a second blue plane, uh, second planes, not a blue planes, a white planes, of course, uh, and then play out a crusade so he can attack for four. That could be a line of play. Another thing that he could do is maybe he's got a disenchant in hand, kind of wait for the right moment. And of course, then he does need a second land to do that, but uh, that would also be a nice move. For example, an end step of David, play a disenchant on the stasis so he can untap everything and swing in. And now he does, of course, have that one land to use the Chaos Orb if he wants to. So end step, he could Chaos Orb on Stasis. That's another line he can take. So a lot of options for Alex here. David is passing the turn. Are we going to see? Yep, we're going to see Alex using it to flip on that Stasis. I think that's a good decision. Everything will be untapped next turn for Alex and he can swing in for six. But first he's got to hit though, so let's wait and see. Flip here, finals of the Color Clash. Yes, really, really good flip by Alex. That's a hit. Stasis is a goner. So everything's gonna untap on the side of Alex. Yeah, this is, it's not looking great for David. has been with the back against the wall pretty much from the start. But he's still on 10. Maybe he's got another Stasis in hand, for example. Playing with three stasis in total, so that's uh, first the attack, of course, six points of damage. David dropping to four. Can Alex put some more pressure on? There is another Pegasus. So in this matchup, obviously the Sarah Angel is, is really a good creature, creature you want to cast if you're Alex. Tapping two white. Okay, also casting a Thunder Spirit, so he's got enough mana, doesn't even have to take Mana Burn here. So Thunder Spirit and the Pegasus hitting the board, that's almost enough damage to kill David. So even if David has a Stasis here, it's going to be very tricky for him. There's a Mox Sapphire. Let's see what he can do. Tapping two. I'm tapping again though. <laughs> of course the player's taking their time. This is the finals. And David needs to find a way out of this in game number one. I mean, a stasis would at least, you know, you know, would at least help him to get to only get to one instead of uh, getting killed next turn. Assuming Alex doesn't find the card like a crusade. So David really in the tank here. I mean, if he could turn this game around, that would be really a miracle. But that is, of course, what these type of decks do, right? You get behind a lot and then you still find a way to win. Look at this transmute artifact, a card from antiquities. Two blue to cast for the sorcery, second artifact, and then you can look up an artifact in your deck with the same casting cost. If it has a higher casting cost, in this case than zero, you have to pay the extra mana to cast it. So there we see a time vault. So it has to pay the two. Now does he have a twiddle? With a twiddle he can untap it and take an extra turn. So there we see the shuffling here of David. We've got the complicated pile stuff. There's the twiddle exactly. So he's gonna take an extra turn as expected. There's a maze, okay. That's something. There's the untap, taking the extra turn. And I'm sure if you're Alex now, you're like, are you kidding me? Is he really gonna find a way out of this? 
And it's very much uh, possible, especially with the maze now as well. Again, if he finds a, a stasis and with the maze he can send a creature back. It is a bit of a nunbo though, stasis and maze, because the creature that's then attacking of your opponent does get to untap. But you've got to do what you've got to do. So six islands and that maze. And already two twiddles in the bin for David, so I think it's quite unlikely that he has another twiddle in hand. Against the against deck of Alex, by the way, uh, the rocket launcher just to kill creatures is also a great uh, card. Look at that, going for the Brain Geyser. So playing a Brain Geyser of three, so keeping the one blue untapped, hoping to find a twiddle probably. But David is really stretching it here though. And I can't blame him. You want to try to do what you can do. Okay, there is a uh, factory. Okay, tapping two. Or are we going to see? There's the stasis. I mean, next turn the stasis is going to go again. But hey, for now. He's going to survive, it seems, another turn. Which is quite an accomplishment. So Alex drawing a card here. So he can attack for three. There's a planes. He's gonna swing in here. Oh, just with the Thunder Spirit though. He's gonna put him on two. No Maze of If. Interesting. He's gonna untap. Of course, give him an extra turn. Yeah, that is brilliant. That is brilliant. I didn't even see that, but it makes absolute sense. And then next turn, the Stasis goes, but he can take an extra turn with the, with the Time Vault. Wow. That is a really good move here by David. Alex swinging in. Gonna put him on one. He can actually send him back exactly, perhaps. Yeah, let's do that. Sending him back, so the Pegasus untaps. And there's the pass, so he's gonna lose the stasis here, but I mean, he's got the untapped time vault, right? So he can now play a land, take the turn. Exactly, that's exactly what he does, wow. And I mean, if you're on two, you're not dead. And remember, Alex is playing mono white, so there's no direct damage whatsoever in his deck. He's got to win by untapping those creatures. We do, of course, now already have two stasis in the bin. There's an Ancestral Recall. So he's really finding those power cards, by the way. Time, uh, time Walk and Ancestral Recall. Finding another island. I think I also saw a Control Magic in the hand of... David, but that's not going to do much. There's simply too many creatures on the side of Alex. There's a twiddle. Okay, untapping. It is. Oh, it's so much work to win against these decks. There's a transmute artifact. Oh, look at him go here. Play, playing two of the uh, transmute artifacts in total, I believe. I wonder what he's going to pick up. Never Neural's Disc. Oh my goodness. That is really good. He can reset the board. Amazing magic here from, from David. Staying alive here. And look at that library. It's really thinned out. It's hard to make three stacks out of that. There's an island. And then he's going to take his extra turn. He's going to untap the disc. Oh, 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 oh. oh, this is devastating. This is devastating if you're Alex. Absolutely. Is he going to use it main? Let's see what he's going to do. And he is going to use the disc. Destroys all the creatures on the side of Alex. Oh, my goodness. Gonna boomerang his own disc in response to the activation. Oh man. And David really playing this well. This is done quite well. And it looks like he's gonna recast the Nevenerals disc. 
picking up the disc here, it seems, from the boomerang. Exactly. Boomerang goes to the bin and then he's gonna recast it, right? Or does he have better options? That's the question. Still, still has plenty of mana. Exactly, recasting the disc. And also attacking for two, why not? Are we gonna see a swords then on the side of Alex? Nope, taking the damage. Dropping to 18, I think that's the first damage that he's took this first game. And I mean, David's still in and he's on two. And that disc is looking mighty strong. Are we gonna see a disenchant here? Disenchant on the Nevenrolls disc, so that's good. Can Alex put some more pressure on though? Tapping two. There's another creature, the 1-1 one, one flyer again, the Pegasus. Flying and banding for one white and one. Passing the turn. Now remember, David also has that maze of if. Alex does play with Armageddon. Like Armageddon would be fantastic actually for Alex, but then he's got to find a way to play it without, uh, you know, having to worry about counter magic. There's the attack for two first. So I guess Alex did take some damage, perhaps from Mana Burn. So taking two now, gonna go to 15. And uh, Alex drawing a card for turn here. If he can find planes number five, potentially he could cast the Sarah Angel. There's a Tundra Wolves. Tapping two, there's a Crusade. Okay, so. That Crusade's kind of kind of nice, making his creatures two twos, making it hard for David to attack again with the factory. Although I'm sure David's not very worried about it, though. And I think, by the way, that Alex is not playing with Armageddon. I think I'm uh, confusing his list with another player in the tournament. Anyway, there's a control magic taking over the Pegasus. And we talked about that scenario in the deck tech section of David where we discussed potential ways for him to win the game. One of them is of course using control magic, taking over a creature of the opponent. It's not like his plan A or plan B, but it is a plan C or plan D level strategy. He's playing with two control magics, I believe, in his deck. There's the pass, so Alex untapping everything, and it's it's pretty tough for Alex here. I mean, David's on two, but he seems uh, the game seems to be slipping out of his hands, though, because this is exactly the game that David wants to play. And for David, it's really good that he's playing against Mono White and not against, for example, Red, you know, with the direct damage. There's another Crusade. So that means that the Pegasus on the side of David is now also a 3-3. So he can start putting some pressure on the life total now of Alex then. Attacking next turn would put him on 12. Then he's on a four turn clock. There's the attack again with the wolves. And there we're gonna see the maze activation of course. And here is the past turn. And it's looking just really good for David, exactly swinging for the air for three, gonna put Alex on 12. Or are we gonna see a disenchant? Nope, we're gonna see a swords on his own creature. You gotta do what you gotta do. That means three more life as well for David. So he's gonna go back up to, 50, uh, to five. I wanna say 15, but that's a life total of Alex. So he's gonna go back up to five. And what a comeback this has been. Oh, another control magic. Oh, ho, ho, ho. that is pretty brutal. That is pretty brutal. That also means that next turn, if Alex cannot find another creature or disenchant or anything, then, then Alex can just attack for five and also animating the factory. That would put him on a three turn clock. Okay, there's a Savannah Lines. At least that's something. It's a... Uh, 4-3 creature now, so it's a good blocker for the factory, but it's not gonna help him with the uh, Tundra Wolves because uh, it's got first strike, that's a 3-3 three, three first striker, so that's not great to block for uh, for Alex. 
Let's see what uh, what else David can do here. Looks like he's going to swing in here with the Thunder Wolves. Putting Alex then on 12. What else can he do? Passing to turn, yeah, makes sense. Four cards in hand for him, three cards I believe for Alex. There's another planes. Sarah Angel would help. There's the attack, sending it back. And just a pass. This is really tough for Alex. He was so incredibly close. And then we had the Time Vault Stasis shenanigans. And I mean, that's such a good combo, you know, the Stasis and the Time Vault, because you're giving your opponent an extra turn when you have a Stasis on the board. So basically that turn is useless for your opponent, but it's so good for you because then when the Stasis destroys itself, you can tap the Vault to take an extra turn. Then you can be the first one to take advantage of having that untap step again. So it's, it's really, really good magic played by David. There's the strip mine taking care. Okay, this is interesting now, taking care of the maze. That is something you could decide to attack with the line and then probably David's gonna trade the line for the factory. The problem here for Alex though is that his life total is getting lower as well. So there we see the attack. Of course, an option for David could be here to just take the damage drop to one. think Ooh, Alex changing his mind though untapping again if I would be David I would be tempted to block here on the factory but I mean David obviously knows how to pilot his deck best Alex deciding not to attack though passing the turn perhaps worried about a time walk although the time walks in the bin but remember David is playing with four recalls there's the attack with the 3-3 three, three Wolf. So he's gonna drop to six, I believe. Nope, he's not because there's a Swords to Plowshares. So that is taking care of the Thunder Wolves. Does mean three more life for David. So look at that, he went from two all the way back up to eight and Alex dropped all the way to nine. So now both players are almost equal when it comes to life total. And I mean, this game is really kind of going now towards David's direction. He's a control player. We're in the late stages of the game, which is always good for a control player. And they're almost on equal footing with life. And I believe David also has more cards in hand. So it's looking really good for him. Tapping five, it seems. Untapping again. Playing an island. What are we gonna do? There's a soul ring. So much mana on the side of David. Unbelievable. Playing a recall, pretty big one. Two cards going into the bin. Strip mine and time twister. Oh, he's got so much goodies there. I mean, it's, this, is, this is shopping the way you want to shop. Look at that Brain Geyser. is going to be absolutely brilliant for him. But also that Control Magic is going to be quite good. Playing out the Control Magic to take the Lion here of Alex. And I mean, those Control Magics are so, so good for David here now later in the game. Two cards in hand passing the turn. But that Brain Geyser is going to be sick. And I think Alex knows it. At least, you know, let him draw a disenchant to get his creature back. Only one card in hand, by the way, for Alex. Uh, this is looking really bad for him. Next turn, David can swing in with the line and, of course, animate the factory if he wants to. That would mean six points of damage. He would drop to three. There's also an option where David chooses not to animate the factory because he wants to use the mana for the Brain Geyser. First, he's going to draw a card for turn. There's the attack just with the lines. He's gonna put Alex on five. Oh, this has gotta be tough for Alex. This has gotta be tough for Alex. I kind of feel for you, man. You were so close. 
And I mean, this Brain Geyser is the nail in the coffin, I think. Now he's gonna draw six more cards. <sighs> yep, 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 yep. I've been in this position, playing against these combo decks. And I have to say, I always admire the players piloting them, you know, because there are so many aspects that you have to think of. And there were really moments in the game here where I thought David is as good as dead. There's nothing that can save him. All he can do is postpone the inevitable because he was so low in life so early in the game. But look at this. I mean, he managed. And there we go. Winning game one. David. Oh, man. That was, uh, wow. What a game one and what a turnaround in game one. And I'm really looking forward now to game two. And uh, at least the good news for Alex is he is on the play in game two. And with his deck, that is really, really important. Okay, let's uh, let these players shuffle up and we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So Alex behind, so he's on the play, starting with the planes, needs to win this. No one drop for him though. And David with an island and a pass. So it's uh, important for Alex to kind of get going. Also no two drop though. That is not great for him. Now we've got counter magic uh, for David because he's playing his second island. And here is a preacher. And of course his preacher is pretty bad in this matchup because David is not playing with, uh, with any creatures himself. Of course there could be a scenario where you want to use your preacher to get back a creature that David stole with a control magic. So that is a possibility. So Preacher 1-1 one, one hitting the board card from the dark. And you can tap it and then you uh, your opponent has to give you one of his creatures. But of course in the case of David, if you don't have any, you cannot give any. And now David taking his turn. There is a maze of if. So now David doesn't even have to take that one point of damage from the Preacher. Now remember, all non-basic lands in this format are restricted. So there's only one Maze of If in the deck of David. There's the attack, probably the Maze activation exactly. So it's going to untap the Preacher again. I really wonder what else is in his hand there. We see a Tundra Wolves probably just drew into that one. Perhaps he's got a handful of Sarah Angels and we're going to see them uh, come next turn. Playing with three Sarah Angels in total. Also with four Thunder Spirits. And there is one of the Thunder Spirits. There's a Mana Drain though, countering the Thunder Spirit. Does mean three mana for David. Remember, this is with uh, Mana Burn. So if he cannot use the three mana, he's got to take three points of damage. So let's see if he can use it. A Brain Geyser, for example, will be really nice here for David. One blue. And playing a rocket launcher using the three mana from the mana drain. So rocket launcher card from antiquities, four to cast. And um, cannot be used to turn, it comes into play. But after that you can use it, you can pay two to deal one damage to any target, which is quite good against Alexander's board. And now we also see an ancestral recall being played out by David as well. So things are going really good for David, I think. You know, he's, he's, he hasn't taken a single point of damage yet. There's the attack. So he's, now he's taking one point of damage from the Preacher. Gonna drop to 19, but that's really good for David. And Alex, all he can do is just play more creatures. Disenchant on the Rocket Launcher. That's pretty important. Because re remember, David is also playing with Power Monolith. So that can give him a... Uh, unlimited amounts of mana so when you have that power monolith combo in combination with the rocket launcher you basically won the game so it makes sense here that alex uses his disenchant on the uh, rocket launcher the problem of course for alex is that david has got way too many like targets for the four disenchants let's see what david can do now tapping three blue There's a Basalt Monolith, tapping it, tapping four in total for a Neveneral's Disc. Interesting. Playing out the Disc and the Basalt Monolith. That's an interesting strategy. 
Now do remember that David is playing with four recalls. Are we going to see another disenchant here by Alex? I mean, this is so tough to play against these decks because you're constantly thinking, what should I target with, uh, with the disenchants? And remember, Alex has no graveyard recursion, so once he's used his disenchant, he's not going to see it back. Well, unless David plays a Time Twister, of course. Attacking with two here. Amazing the Thunder Wolves. Wolf, so he's taking one damage, going to drop to 18. Yeah, and things are just really looking good for David. I think there's no need for him to use the, di the disc at this stage in the game. I was kind of expecting Alex to, you know, maybe try to, uh, to play out a Sarah Angel. Perhaps he doesn't want to because of the disc, but then again, I think I would just uh, play it out and kind of force David to make a difficult decision. I mean, re remember the Basil Monolith is part of an important combo piece in his deck. Attacking again with both. And the Wolves being sent back, I assume, exactly. So he's going to take one point of damage again from the Preacher. I mean, the Preacher is doing work. And now he's also untapping the Basalt Monolith. And I guess uh, taking the turn. Exactly. Here we go. So six cards in hand, seven now for David. There's another Island. And I mean, in game one, it was looking much better for Alex than it is in game two. In game one, he eventually lost. So, I mean, this is going to be super tough for Alex. He's got to find a way uh, to deal more points of damage. Attacking again with both. So we have the same scenario now for a couple of turns. So David only taking one hit. Okay, there's another creature on the board. A Pegasus. Let's see if David wants to respond, potentially counter. I don't think he does. He's got the disc, exactly choosing not to, taking his turn. And I think this is a good move from Alex to kind of, you know, slowly play out more creatures, make it difficult for David to make that decision when to use the disc. At least now you can attack for two. I mean, attack with three, meaning you get two damage in because of the maze of David. And perhaps Alex can find a crusade. That would be quite nice. Yeah, it looks like David's gonna just pass the turn, not really doing anything else. So let's see what Alex can do now. Is he simply just gonna attack with three and deal two points of damage? There's the attack. Sending back the wolves again. Two points of damage here, so David's gonna drop to 14. I guess if you look at it optimistically, Alex has got David on a seven turn clock, but I just, yeah, I just think it's going to be really, really rough for Alex here. Because I mean, David has had control from the start, it seems. Playing another island. And a pass. Okay, he's like, you know what? I'm fine with the current situation. There's the attack. So it looks like Alex is just keeping his resources in hand. He's fine with the scenario and he's kind of forcing David to at a certain point make a decision. And I think that's a good strategy. Because the three creatures is just enough to be annoying enough for David to want to do something. On the other hand, it's not too bad for David either because he's also kind of simply building up his hand, trying to find the pieces that he needs to combo off and win the game. Ooh, look at this, taking all the damage, dropping to 11, not even using the Maze of If. Does that mean that perhaps he's got a Mirror Universe in hand? Tapping three here. Ooh, what is he gonna do? Tapping seven. Another one here, so eight mana down. Nope, seven mana down. Are we gonna see a big Brain Geyser perhaps? A twiddle. So he now has seven in the mana pool.
Let's see what he wants to do. I'm curious. Oh, he wants to give himself mana burn. Of course, it took me a long time to realize that that was his plan. He's giving himself mana burn and then I'm expecting here to see a mirror universe and perhaps even a time walk to uh, trade. Oh, here we go. He's gonna use this to look up a mirror universe. Oh man, so transmute artifact. Are we gonna see a response from Alex at Disenchant now on the disc in response? That's kind of nice. So that means he's got to sack the Basil Monolith. Wow, wow, wow. It really took me a moment to realize like, what is David doing? Cause I'm like, you cannot cast, um, you know, you cannot cast a, uh, a Brain Geyser in, in, on the end step of your opponent. There's another Disenchant, wow. So this transmute artifact is having some serious hiccups and now the plan may not work. There's a counter spell though. Oh, that counter spell is so important for David who probably wasn't counting on a double disenchant. So important here for David. If this plan would have backfired and he couldn't look up the mirror universe, he, you know, it, it would have been a really tough game two for him. And remember, all he needs to do is win this game to win the tournament. Here we see a mirror universe. And I mean, I have to say, I'm really, really enjoying David's playstyle. I understand why he got into... Yeah, now we're going to see a time walk, right? There's the time walk. And I understand how David got into the finals with this deck. I mean, he knows how to play with his blue combo deck. It is very impressive to see. Using the mirror universe now in his upkeep to change life totals. Does he have a side blast to finish it off? That will be ultimately, you know, super brutal. First, have to shuffle still from the transmute artifact. But now, David's on 20, Alexander's, Alex is on four. This is horrible for Alex, but I have to say, I am enjoying David here and, and, and his play style. I mean, we saw him get back in game one when he was on two all the way back up to uh, to eight at a certain point and, and win game one. And now we're seeing him here in game number two, you know, waiting at the exact right moment to play the mirror universe and time walk routine, which is just brilliant. And here we see the players changing life totals. 20 lives now for David, four life for Alex. If David can pick up his Psy Blast, it is the end of the road. There's the Psionic Blast. Oh, ho, ho. are we going to see a Swords though? Swords, Swords, Swords. Yay, there's a Swords. Okay, so at least he's, he's, he's stuck on one. He's stuck on one. That's something. Are we going to see a Counter Spell? No Counter Magic. Okay, so Alex is not dead yet. Oh, man. This is what a finals. What a game number two. Alex on one life. The good news for Alex though is that it's quite difficult for David to deal damage. You know, his deck is just all about control. So there's only one side blast in the deck and that's now out of the deck. Oh, look at that. He did have a twiddle to tap down. Oh, he's gonna get it back. He's got four recalls, of course. Oh man. I have to say, I'm really impressed by the recalls. If I see how David plays with them. There we see Alex untapping, knowing that that one Psionic Blast is in hand. Sending back a creature. Oh my goodness. Is this the end here for, Day for, for Alex? It is David. Uh, Alex dropping his cards. Wow, 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 wow. I mean, really, 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 really well played by David. And um, yeah, you know, like I said, I'm impressed with how well he's piloting this deck. And uh, I was surprised to see this list getting into the finals because I was under the assumption, you know, it's so hard to be consistent and to always like have your lock. And especially in a field with monocolor decks only, there are going to be so many aggressive decks, but I mean, after seeing this match, I completely understand how David made it to the finals and how he actually has won this tournament. He is our mono colored champion. Congratulations, David! <laughs> Thank you.
Oh, after all the cheering is done, I have to say I'm cheering with them here. I'm uh, I'm really 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 uh, impressed with uh, with this deck and um, how it's how it's done in the finals. Uh, congratulations again, David. You are going to get the uh, the Timmy the uh, the altered Timmy. There are only uh, 25 of those Tims, and one of them is getting your way. Also with the tournament prize card that's also uh, coming your way as well. So thank you very much. And if you've enjoyed this uh, match, this episode, please take a moment to uh, subscribe, to hit that subscribe button, I mean, and uh, ring that bell. Because that way you're not going to miss a thing. You know, you can be, you will, you'll be updated about all the, uh, all the new videos on Timmy Talks. And here we see that uh, winning deck, by the way, by, um, by David. And uh, what else can I say here? Oh yeah, of course, before I forget, please like, share and comment uh, on this video. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And talking about helping the channel move forward, you can also become a, patri a patron on patreon.com slash timmytalks. So please take a moment to check that out. I would really appreciate it. You can become a patron just like David and Alex. And then you can join the online events as well. So you can join the online tournaments. I organize tournaments every two months, three months or so. Uh, just to thank the patrons and channel members uh, for their support. That's why I do it. And um, yeah, if, if you like these tournaments, hop on the train. And also, of course, uh, if you're supporting the channel as a patron, uh, your name will be also mentioned in the end scroll at the end of end every single video, including uh, this one. Let's go to the end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Zeke!